So I have a tube shaped in a very peculiar way. Because of this interesting shape, we can get some even more interesting things to happen when I put it in this cup of water. Water suddenly starts flowing out of the tube, despite the fact that the tube is higher than the top of the water. And not only that, it'll continue to flow until it drains the entire cup. How did this happen? Well, this type of flow through a tube might look familiar. It's called a siphon, but it's different than a normal siphon tube. Normally, in order to start a siphon to get the water up and over the edge, you have to suck on the other end. This pulls the water up and starts a chain reaction where the atmospheric pressure pushes the water through the tube and out of the glass, as long as the end of the tube stays below the surface of the water in the cup. So it takes some energy to start a siphon. But when I just drop this weird shaped tube in the water, how does it start the siphon? Well, as the water moves up this first stretch of the tube, nothing interesting happens. But then once it reaches the top, now it has an empty tube to flow freely downhill. So the flow of water moves fast, so fast that it doesn't just travel up to the top of this tube and stop, but it has some momentum now. This momentum carries the water up and over the second hump, which is a little bit higher. Once it reaches that point, now it's at the highest point of the tube, and if it drops below the surface of the water, it'll create the siphon effect. In order to see what's happening, I've put some clear tubing that we can watch the water flow through it. Watch how it just starts on its own. It's weird because it doesn't happen as fast as you think it does. It's actually pretty delayed and the water just kind of barely goes up the tube, then goes down a little bit faster, and then suddenly it just has enough momentum to get up and over the edge. So in this case, we use the momentum of water to give it a little bit more potential energy than it had to start with. So we use the momentum of water to raise the water level a little bit. So let's say instead of trying to siphon out water, I just wanted to keep pumping water up really high in a tube. Well, I can use something called a hydraulic ram pump. In the hydraulic ram pump, you start with water that's naturally flowing down a gradient due to gravity, but you connect two one-way valves slightly separated from each other like this. What happens is, as the water flows and closes one of the valves quickly, it causes a pressure spike to happen that pushes water up the tube. This is the same pressure spike that allowed our self-starting siphon to work. But then the other valve closes so water can't flow back out. So some of the water gets pushed up the tube with each close of the valve. But most of the water gets wasted out the waste valve. So you stole the energy from the wastewater to push other water up the tube. And surprisingly, you can actually pump water with no external power or electricity higher than the initial level of the source of water. I did a whole video on this setup and I'll put the link in the description so you can see that as well. The ram pump uses energy from water itself, but you can also use energy to move water up a tube just by shaking it, if you use a shaker siphon. So this device here is called a shaker siphon. So as I move the shaker siphon up and down in the water, it pushes this little stopper up and allows water to pass by. But then it moves back down as the water tries to fall back out. So it's a sort of one-way valve. So with each shake of the tube, water moves higher and higher up the tube. So all I do is continually shake it up and down to keep the water moving up the tube. So if you just get it up and over the edge, you can easily create a siphon. So the shaker siphon and the self-starting siphon are really useful when you don't want to suck on the tube that could have dangerous chemicals or vapors in it. What's really cool about both of these siphons is that I just made them using my new 3D printer. Thanks to Creality for sponsoring this video and sending me their new fastest printer, the Creality K1 and K1 Max. I actually have six 3D printers, and these are by far my favorite. They move at lightning speed. <laughs> Look how fast it can print. Remember that this is real time, not fast forwarded. It's printing at 600 millimeters per second printing speed and 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. That's 12 times faster than a regular FDM printer. It has hands-free auto leveling with a G sensor. It's completely enclosed and looks so professional. The other thing I love about these printers is how fast they heat up. With the new ceramic heater that encircles the entire hot end, it heats to 200 C in 40 seconds and melts the filament instantly. It has large fans on the print head and fans that cool the model directly with an 18 watt auxiliary fan in the build chamber that enhances the cooling effect too. 
I love also that you can take time-lapse videos easily with this and connect via Wi-Fi and monitor your prints in real time. It'll even detect if your first layer peels up or you have some problem with your model and it'll pause for you so you don't have PLA spaghetti at the end. Its user interface is super user friendly and easy to use. So if you want to get your very own K1 today, click the link in my description and use code TAL30 to get $30 off. And thanks again to Creality for sponsoring this video. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.